You think it's a religion because people are, are, are going to the forest to die. Yeah. No, it is not religious. It's a, that's a symptom. Oh. It's a sign of a decaying society. It is a sign of a corrupt society where people no longer have hope in life. They have lost hope. Throw on the concrete, I went greeting each one of my life. <laughs> Thank you. Uh -huh. Can you greet me again? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. They, they all are suddenly laughing from one. They have never seen the women laugh. They've never seen a man greeting them. Like that. And this is yeah. a young man, very handsome. Yeah. I was very handsome. Yes. You see, these people, by hungering and fasting, they are killing themselves the way you would go to a Shangaden and drink and kill yourself. I was admitted to Princeton University, similarly. Where? In America. In America? Yeah. The Princeton, yeah. I was invited, I even in a fly. I was that was 19 what? 19. Welcome to Lucy Moria Network. This is Lucy Moria and we are here today in Gong at the Carreño Rock Gardens which belongs to our famous legend, retired reverend Joya. Most of you, Joya might be history to you and but he is and today he is doing a lot of historic teachings here at his gardens in Gong. We visited him, we have been around the garden, we've seen the museum, we've seen the library, now we're at his office. And uh, we would like to hear, for those who have not, don't know who Reverend Joya is, or who he was them days, what he has contributed to the democracy, second democracy of this country, today we'll have the story. Reverend Joya, good morning. Good morning, Madam Lucy. How are you today? Fine, Lucy. We are so happy that we came to visit you. Thank you for allowing us to be here. And we have learned a lot, a lot. We can't even finish. You are historic. There are so many things, even myself, I didn't know. And I don't think I, I will know in one day. So, uh, for the Kenyans, for the sake of the Kenyans, being an older person now, you've hit 82 or 83 years. 82, 82 years. Yeah. And, uh, you know, our organization is dealing with the issues affecting the elderly in our country and looking for solutions. Uh, in brief, we'd like to hear a little bit who is Joya, and then we can go to the question of what you think about the care of the elderly in this country, both by the society, the families, and the government. Yes. I, I, I don't know to start with the elderly, because in my language, aging is even a child near Kuraga. Yes. You get old. You, everybody it's a process. Aging. It's yes. a process in which you start aging the moment you are born. Yes. You can know, you can measure, the have seen a one-year-old girl and a 80-year-old girl. There yes. are still age differences. Yes. So now it's a process. Yes. In which you... Aging is ripening. Yes, who is Joya now? I'm ripe. Aging is not decaying, it is? Ripening. You ripen, you age. You, it's a natural ripening process. Until you mature, you bear fruits, you bear seeds, you bear fruits. And I think I'm at the point where bearing fruits is not the issue anymore. Yes. I have born enough fruits with, is to enjoy the fruits of what had taken place in the past in my life. And like, uh, what do I say? I was born in 1941 mm -hmm. by Wadia mm -hmm. and Ijoa. I grew to be 80% my mom for one reason, because my father was conservative. He even left teaching and he became a home guard and a headman, uh, which was the opposite because this was colonial government. But my mom, was very radical. She was the first Kikuyu girl to refuse to be circumcised in 1925. By herself? Uh, by herself. She, went, she ran away 
to pass in, in search of education at the eternal excellence. Wow. Uh, so, after 1925, that's January f uh, 5, when she escaped, uh, 1925. Then she became a teacher in 1931 with a teaching certificate. The first woman to graduate from any college with a teaching uh, certificate. In Kenya? In Kenya. Uh, wow. What do you call, they call it Kenya Primary 4, P4. P4. Yeah. Then she, she didn't want to get married because she was heading and organizing women guild into Kiyama Kiango. You know the women's guild called yes. Kiyama Kiango? Yes, I hear. You see the, the council of the shield, it was called. Yes. Then, in 1936, my father fell in love with her. So she became a teacher before she was even married? Even my father. They were teachers. My father was the secretary to teach in the Gospel Society, uh, Missionary Society, Kaboy, to be a teacher. Yes. He came from Nyeri. She went to teach at Mwyo. To start schools, not only teach, to start schools in Mkowene. Okay. So she started several schools uh, as a teacher. Then, in 1936, when they were in love, uh, she, 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 she allowed my father to come to her home to, 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 to report that he wanted to marry her. When he was on, the, but my, her, my father's father was the richest man he got in the, the, the richest, the second richest, next mm -hmm. to Abogo Amalagani, in the goat and the cattle. Your grandfather? Yeah, my grandfather. So he, because he had only my father as a boy, he cut all those, he separated half of those goods to take and pay dowry to my, to my father, my grandfather, John Kagai. Eh, uh, Kagai, the, the, the father of John Kagai. Uh, the mother, the father, so Ruse Kagai uh, Kivaki's wife is my cousin. So now mm. she wanted to go and pay dowry there. Your mom. My, 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 my father, my mm. grandfather. Mm -hmm. No, on the way, my father met them and told them, you, she, she pointed an umbrella. She was holding an umbrella and a Bible. She told them, you, a clan of Baria River, take all these goats to a cattle market, sell all of them, and buy only one goat for your man to marry. If you want him to sleep with a goat, it's okay, but for me, I'm not a goat to be bought with the cows and the goat. Your mother said that? Yeah, she told the whole clan. Wow. Oh, they were very angry. They all turned with their beer, all with their, their... The women were carrying a lot of wedgie on their backs. They all turned away and went angry and went and drank their liquor and their show. And now that was not the end. The wedding was announced at Tumtumu. At, uh, on uh, in 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 nineteen uh, in the same year nineteen ninety six, so they got married with my father. My father brought those same goat to be eaten. They ate. They could not finish. He said, "So <laughs> no one paid the dowry for your mother. She said she she was not, a goat. she's not a goat to be with, to be bought. To be with bought. Goat. Yeah, with the goat. She wanted to be a model for freedom of women, to be free from domination by men." Now then now they got married nineteen forty one you were born. Six. I was born but I was actually conceived born in nineteen forty one but I was actually conceived on the fifth January nineteen twenty five when she refused to get my circumcised. Twenty five? I was conceived sixteen years before I was born. <laughs> what do you mean? By her action. Oh. I told you in the beginning I am eighty percent my you mom. Your mom, yeah. By I was conceived by her action not by her not not simply sexual action but by her transformative daring bold by the radicalism i was yeah. conceived that way that's why i'm what i am because i am exactly a carbon copy of my mom uh, okay yes uh, now after i was born 1941 uh, i was brought up to my mother when anyway she, she, I knew that by the, by grew 
80% my mom were there. Ten uh, percent Kenyan. Then your father is five percent. No, <laughs> the, the other ten percent, my father is two percent. I'm Kikuyu percent, two percent. <laughs> I am a man, twenty-two percent. That's six percent. <laughs> and all the others have two two percent. <laughs> Even your dad is two percent in your yeah, life. Yeah, in, or less. Because he was a home guard and I was a radicalist. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, he was a home guard. And, and, a, and a, not only a home guard, a very conservative. My mother, you very liberal. And my, my mother was very, not simply liberal. You are liberal, liberal you yes, Your mother was leftist. She was leftist. So in 1950, my mother died of a, a natural oh, cause. 1950? Yeah. But okay. so I didn't start school like other children. I went to look after my grandfather, Kato, and everything because there are so many. But you know, in 1953, I started school in standard day three. Oh. I, by intellectually, I was at the same level. No, at work class three. Or any use of the word which was there. Mm. Uh, to me, I was a Mudoni. You know, Adoni. Yes. The other children are, are pagan children. Oh <laughs> to goodness. me, mm. I could not be compared with those other. So you come from Guchunga. You come from Guchunga Mbusu to class three. To, to, yes, and I went to class three. Uh, and and I, your mom was already I, I, because your mom was dead that yes, time. Yes, and because that's why I, was, I did start, I should have started school in 1950. So even your mom being a teacher, she didn't give enough the time to see you and go to school. Yeah. But she left me more than that because she, I am irritated. She used to make me sing English. Songs in the church because she was a preacher. She was preaching. She was an evangelist also. So now, mm. what happened is that she forced me to learn, to to know how to read and write even before I started walking. Yeah. Okay. By the time I was five years, 1956, uh, 1946, I knew how to read. To, to read. To, to, I knew the alphabet. Wow. <laughs> you see me. So she had trained me, even my sister, at home. Now, come to when I, I couldn't start school with the beginners, so what I did was, somebody called Gahiro, my neighbor. He, he, he too was looking after goods. I told him, I'll, be, I'll come to school and he'll be sitting next to you and I'll be copying from you. Oh. <laughs> and I'll be giving you fruit. Because my father had an ocean. I would give him passion fruits, oranges, uh, the other things, and he would allow me to read his notes, notes in school. When he, we do a test, the first time, I copied him. I copied, I copied the test the first time from him. He got zero, and I got zero. <laughs> <laughs> because you are copying. <laughs> wow. The uh, second uh -huh. time, I didn't copy two. You didn't copy uh, everything. To, to everything. Mm. So why I didn't copy, I got the answer. Why I copied, I didn't get it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that was funny. But I was kicked out and went to back to Saturday 2. Oh, from 3? Yeah, I was yeah. kicked out by the end of the third term. <laughs> because of copy? No, because oh. I, my, my sister disclosed that I don't belong to that class. Yeah. Yeah, my sister divorced. Uh. We fought. That was my first fight with my wife, my sister, when we went home. Yeah. We fought. I knocked her, and she fell. You know how the water falls from a house? Yeah. Where the, the water hits the ground, there is a... From a, the roof. A, yeah, there is a... a, a kamtaro. A kamtaro. Uh, I broke, I knocked her in that mutaro. <laughs> uh, Fighting. Uh, because she disclosed... She said he, she, he doesn't belong to class three. Yeah. He doesn't I, even know how to read. Yeah. When I knocked her, we didn't... The, the, the fight stopped, but she respected me and I respected her. Now, Lisoma Mbaka is still there. My, my yes. sister was older than me. Wapi. Now, mm. by the end of the term, I passed from Surrey to, then I went to Surrey 3 yes. again. You, you understand? And I was number two. Wow, without stealing, no, without, without stealing. copying. Without stealing. Yes. And I went like that. I was always top. Uh, I went to inter I passed the the cup. Mm -hmm. Went to intermediate school. Yes. 
very well. That was Tomo Tomo. No, Kiagoma. Kiagoma. There was Tomo there was Kiagoma and the Akarema. There were about four. And the Kerimara. Yes. Yes. In the whole year, there were four schools. intermediate schools. Yes. I went to one of the best ones. Yes. So, then, I passed again to go to Kagumo High School. In the Kagumo High School, we were taking that year 40 students. I was number seven in the whole of Kenya. Those went to high school. And you know how many high schools that time? I know yeah. the high schools. Mm -hmm. There was only Kagaru, I think Kagaru. Meru school. Kaga. Meru, which is Kaga. There was. Uh, okay. There was the other one was uh, did this alliance? Yes, alliance. And it, and about two others. Yes. So going to high school was a national matter. And I was number forty. Nationally. Nationally. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't I did I didn't improve mm -hmm. for four years. Yes. But I, I but I didn't I didn't I, I, I even dropped number from number seven by nine from four to number eleven. <laughs> In the class so, notes. Yeah. I, so starting with, I, I started having more people to compete with at Kagumo. So at this point now, let's say you are you are done with the primary school and the yeah, secondary and I'm in high school, and I'm saved 1956. So I, I was about to ask you now, where did now the Christianity follow you and your mom no, is no, already you see, gone? Already, I knew. Already, I've been asked by him when I got saved 1956. Every elder, every clergyman wanted me to become a minister. Because they wanted to, play, to prepare the PCA for independence. Now, what, what motivated you to getting saved at that time? Well, so, a question. Were you in, yes. I was looking after my father's cat on a Saturday. Yes. During the holidays. Yes. And a teacher of my high school, my, my, my intermediate school, yes. 1956. Yes. You know, I'm, I'm in Saturday 5. Yes. Was passing by. Yes. On a bicycle. Yes. And he stood and asked me, I was on, on the lower side of a road. Yes. He asked me, Munale. My name was Munale. Munale, when yes. shall you be saved? Yes. I said on Saturday. Yes. <laughs> that was oh, only my on Saturday. <laughs> That's how I got saved. What did being saved mean? I didn't to you? mean, but I just got saved on Saturday. What did that mean to you? I, it was during the weekday, but I got saved on Saturday. I said on Saturday. It, it didn't, did that mean anything, or you just said yes, I will be saved? It, it didn't mean much, but I was, you know, I was asked by my teacher, when shall you get saved? I said on Saturday. And on Saturday, there was a revival meeting for the whole of East Africa at Karatina. And you said, I'm saved. And I went there to tell the people that I am saved. And from that, is that how you got now to know about the Lord? You know, I was already a Christian. I was already at the Christian communion. I mm. had already... You were church in Goa? I, I was confirmed a member of the church. But now you got saved. Now I, I was asked, when shall you be saved? And I said, I, on Saturday. And I, on Saturday, I went and got saved. <laughs> I, I confess I'm saved. That was... That, that was... A, a, a milestone of who I am. Oh, wow. Uh, now you got saved. How do, when did you become a reverend now? Now, 1956, I got saved. The, in 19, when I finished high school, I went straight to, to the original college. To Motomo is Ghana. The St. Paul's United the original college. The St. Paul's University. I hear it used to be. 1964. The, the same St. Paul's University today. Yeah, the, yeah. I went That's my there. university. I went there to do my leadership. Okay, I went there. to my, I did my, my it was called Makerere University Diploma. Now you it did. It was at Makerere University at that time. No, it was not independent. Now you did. I did a certificate at the Makerere University. I did a diploma. Then. And I passed. Then. Very well. Because I passed well, I was admitted to Princeton University, similarly. Where? In America. In America? Yeah. The Princeton, yeah. I was invited. I even didn't apply. That invited. was 19 what? 1967. You are still single? You are married this time? I was, not, I was invited before I was married. I got married in order to go with a wife. 
<laughs> so there you were in America in 1967. But the most important day in my life was the one I was born, because that was how I became my mom, and being my mom was number one. <laughs> because I was saved, I become Christ-like, and that was also very important because being being like my mom and being like saved are the same thing. Yeah. I didn't see any difference. The, uh, salvation affirmed who I am already. Likeness with God. Yes. Because Genesis said, you have created God's likeness, and there was nothing that could be like God than me being saved. No. There's nothing more, mm -hmm. more for mm -hmm. you to be than like being God. in the likeness of your mother, mother and the likeness of God. God. Yes. Wow. Okay. Radicalism. Yes. Transformative. Now it comes again to 1967. 19, yeah. now, to now you are in. We before I got left the moon, mm -hmm. uh, I, I fell I, I in love with this girl and she fell in love with me. We met in prison with this girl. Your wife? Our boy. Yes, my wife. Prison? Yeah. I, wa I, I was sent to do practical when I was in the Muru. Uh, uh, to preach. To, to, to do practical work for mm -hmm. preaching mm -hmm. at women Rangata prison. Maximum prison for women. Yes. At Rangata. Yes. And I was sent there to do re, to, to, to do my practical as a theologian. Yes. And my wife was there doing research for a social paper at when she was doing A level. Yes. You know, her sociological paper. Yes. So she was in the audience which I was preaching. Yes. And then, it was, it was my turn to preach. I went on, great, instead of preaching, you because the women were being beaten to listen, and they never listened. All the, the times I went there, I saw they were not listening. They did not care about the, the, the religion, the women, the prisoners. The prisoners. They didn't care. They were not listening. <laughs> they were being hit on the head to, not to talk. Because oh, they were, some were in isolation, and they want to talk when they come together. They were being denied their humanity by, Mushen, the, Mushen. by the region. Oh, you saw that happen. Uh, yeah, I saw women, women denied their they humanity. They had no right. They had no right to talk because they have to listen to a clergyman. To me, I hated that. You know, I was very radical. Even though it's you, they are forced to listen to you. You didn't want that. I didn't want that. So they should when, listen voluntarily. So when I come to preaching, I decided not to, to preach. But to greet them because I've never seen them being greeted. Oh. So I greeted them like this. Or I, the, I went around greeting them and we were sitting down on, on the floor. The prisoners. Yes, on the floor, on the concrete. I went greeting each one of my life. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh -huh. Can you greet me again? Uh -huh. uh, yeah. uh -huh. they, were, they all are suddenly laughing from one. They have never seen the women laugh. They've never seen a man greeting them. Them like that. And this is yeah. a young man, very handsome. Yeah. I was very handsome. Yes, you, even today. You, you, can see, you can see that picture. You are handsome yeah. even now. You can see that picture. Yes, there. yes. So I go on. I, 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 you I, went to Gwafanya Ivi Mkono. Gwafanya Mkono. At Ivi. Ivi. And you are all waiting. To be greeted. Yeah, and you are hungry. And, and now you and are And I really get tired. It took more than that minutes to greet all of them. But oh. and the others would jump the queue and they were greeted to be greeted again. <laughs> so that you can touch them. If I can touch them again. Wow. Like he just has touched people. Wow. And was touched then even by women. Then what happened? At the end, I saw, they all gazed. Quiet. No one make noise. They all looked at me. Or no, they listened. Not listened. Uh -huh. Waiting for what I'm going to say. Because before they were being forced. To, to listen. Now they want to listen to this young man who loves them. Some were old. Have been in prison some for 10 or 20 years. Wow. And they have ever been touched by a man. Wow. And here for the first time they are touched. Not only touched, romantically. 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 Very, yes. very romantically. Very, romantic. very, very, very romantic. And, uh, and uh, smiling. And a handsome man. And a handsome man. Young. And they are prisoners for 20 years. They have never see, been touched by a man. Wow. So now. The power of touch. The power of the touch. Okay. Now, they, are, they looked at for me, at me to say something. And I'm in front. And I'm paralyzed. <coughs> Not knowing what. To say. To say because I finished my preaching. Yeah. 
Anyway, they asked. They waited and they said, does anybody have a song? They all put their hands up. Wow. Again, involved. Participatory democracy. Yeah. You know, only your democracy. They have, never, they have never been asked anything. Oh, they are prisoners. Right? Oh, they're just being dictated uh, to. Dictated to. Now ask them, what song do you want to sing? Asking them. Asking them. To be participants. Participants. To be involved. Recognize affirming their dignity. The way inclusion. I was, the inclusion. The way I was affirmed by being saved by Jesus wow. Christ. So, what did they do? Hey, they put all their hands up. I asked him, I said, the song she said to Kute Dresa, to Kute, they all sang. And there is a so, yes. They sang. Mm. They, you could think there was fellowship in it. In After you give them the freedom. The freedom to sing. So, so, so your advocacy, your fighting for rights was right from there. And who no, is this? No, who is this? Who is the one in charge? I started singing. Yeah. Now they waited for something else. Yeah. I, I asked them, who wants to preach? They all put their hands up. Allah. All of them. Wow. I told you, what? One. See, you, you mean them to have the confidence in themselves? They believe dignity. in themselves and dignity. They put all their hands up. They want to preach. I pointed one. You know, I first of all asked, who has a testimony? They all put their hands up. Did they know what testimony was? Yeah, Shuhuda. I pointed at one. She said, now I am here in prison and the Lord has forgiven me. I am now saved. I asked, it's just like I was asked, when shall you be saved? I said, tell her. Now that was Saturday for them. That was their Saturday. That, that was their Saturday. And that is confession with your mouth. Yeah, yeah she when said. When you confess. This woman, this, the one I met, is says, yes, mm -hmm. I killed that man who touched my, who, uh, the, I, I, teach, I killed that woman for stealing my girlfriend. I was an Arias High School teacher. And I killed that man, another teacher, for killing, for, for stealing my girlfriend. Ah, the, what does? The prisoners were so angry because they knew she had refused to admit in the wow. court. Now she's incriminating herself. Yes. And I'm helping her to incriminate herself. Herself. But anyway, she, she didn't mind. So now I ask you another one. She said, also, I did kill. That's why I mean, uh, I've been imprisonment. And they uh, never said before. I killed now. Before they never used my to boyfriend wow. for adjuting me. I poisoned him. Wow. So they started now confessing this capital crime. Now, and they're saying, now they are saved. Oh. Now your wife was there. She was here wearing a high school uniform. Now tell us how you picked her, then you no, went to no, your uh, uh, The last one said, the, 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 as, what who want to preach now? They put their hands up. The one, the John, not preaching for them, they're not reading the Bible. She read in memory, John Frisk. I gave her my Bible to read, and I left her with the Bible. I gave her wow. that Bible. Yeah. She read John 3.16. Well, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. son. Whoever believes, believes in, in him shall, shall, shall have hear. eternal life. Now yeah. I have eternal life, she said. She preached wow. to herself. Yes. Now, for me, I've never seen a revival like that, a revival meeting like that. Yeah. And the prisoners have never seen. So what happened? I, I got, I saw Satan coming from heaven like lightning. Mm -hmm. I got so proud. I looked at this warden who beat this woman. Now I'm fight, I'm at war. I moved, I don't know what I had in my hand. I said, you women, your bureaucracy cannot work. You beat these women to, keep, to, to silence them. That's why you started the advocacy now. No, that's now it's war. Not with the more Inata or Kenyatta, but now with, with the prison, prison, prison wanderers. But, but that was demonic because... But I think I would have done the same if I was in your time. That's no, me. No, my, my, my girlfriend, not in government, I didn't know her. She came up violently and told me, you, if I did this, I went to commit a prison for men and I did what I saw you doing in this women. And I touched them the way you did with these women. I would get the same results. Oh, that's your wife. Yeah. 
Res researcher. If she won't go humble herself kwa prisoners hao wanaume uwasikie uwasalimie mm -hmm. na uwaulize ni nani anataka kuimba ni nani anataka Yeah, would have done the same she said. Wow. She said what you did was wonderful. It's not you. Don't get proud. It's God. Wow. You stretched God's grace, God's hand. So it became a strategy. What? It, that that kufinya mkono salimia. It was I extended God's love. Wow. She said, if I went to a, pre if I'm a woman, if I went to a male prison, and it did to men exactly what you have done to these women, I would yes. get the same results. Is not true. True. I fell in love. I didn't know her. Now you did that. Tell us now you're in the That's US. That's how we, so when I became one to marry and I was invited to Princeton, yeah. and I went to marry, I looked for this girl, I fell in love. Oh. Oh. That's, but we met in prison. She had also fallen in love, but I didn't know she was had fallen so much. <laughs> <laughs> we fell in love with each other in prison. Well, you are also... When I was a student. You, and when you, she you, was in the last... Now she was teaching at Katamayu High School. You had something in common. She liked so your parents. I, she wanted to become a minister, and this was the opportunity to become a minister by marrying me. <laughs> because women were, were not accepted to the ministry. So... So That's you my, went to U.S. Then I was saying mm -hmm. two things, three things now. No, two things. Three things: being born, being saved, mm -hmm. and being married. Three things. Being married to a woman who was more intelligent than me. <laughs> <laughs> she was. Yeah, I no, think she was a replica of my mom. A repeat of who my mom was. And that is what you. As radical. As more than your mom, and that is what as my mom. That is what tickled you. Yeah, that's what tickled you most. Made you happy. I didn't marry my wife. I married my mom. Wow. I married my mom. I always say. Then in her. So then what? Just next? as Jesus was representative of God, my mom, my wife was a representative of my. So you went to U.S. with your wife. With now. my wife. Then she went to university at. Rutgers University to do her bachelor's. She did that in chemistry. Then this. Yeah, that same time, me, I went to do my theology, Master of Divinity. Yeah. She went to do with her first degree. Yes. Okay, that's how we began our life. Yes. Students, we yes. finished. I did my go my I finished my master's and then she finished her bachelor. Then she did her. She changed her bachelor's. To bachelor of political science. She did yes. political science. Yes. So she was a political science. Yes. And then we gradu she graduated and became a, a, a librarian at the same university, Princeton University, Woodrow Wilson School of Public Affairs. Yes. So she started buying cars for me, doing everything. <laughs> so you can imagine <laughs> having all these buying. You know, earning enough to buy you a car. <laughs> Which we came with the home. And we you, brought that that's why you say you marry a wife who is more intelligent than you. By far. <laughs> <laughs> but what was I here? What yeah. What was squeezy? If they see you are more intelligent, there's a problem. They don't have no, she, she, she went to Alliance, me, I went to Kakubo, she went to a better school. <laughs> but now it yeah. is this yeah, so, the so, acceptance that yeah. she, someone else can be better than you. It's, oh, she was very brilliant. That is unique. I never won an argument with her. <laughs> you never won. I never. I don't. <laughs> now you did now, you come back to now was my mom, mm -hmm. my wife, and her replica. And then being saved myself by Jesus Christ. Those three things are what constitutes. Leverage, Timothy, Mulere, Joy. Yeah, yeah. That is what it makes you. That makes me. Okay. Because all those heritage yeah. or legacy is what I utilize in the public. And every day, why I'm happy, everyone in that line except Jesus, they are all women. So women mean so much to you. I can, see, people, I can see Wangari Mada is the one who is featuring in your office. Yeah. My role model. Yes, me yeah. too. Well, then after that, how did you then become the Reverend in the Presbyterian? No. Church. I told you when I got saved in 1956. Yes. Every minister, whatever, Luaji, 
uh, Kareri, they, the modern of the Germans, want me to become a minister. So they, they made you they a minister? Told, I, didn't, I was resisting, I fought hard, and I was objecting. You didn't want to be minister? No, I didn't want. I hated it. My father hated it because he was saying, I want my son to become a DO or someone in the government, a better job than, than being a cleric. So even myself, I thought I would, it's, it would be better if I became a, a teacher or agriculture officer or military officer. Okay, now, so now because of time, tell us now your life think, as, a, as a reverend. Yes. When, how, when you became reverend now. When I, but, but it was a resist. I couldn't resist. Okay, you resist. I couldn't then. resist church pressure. Yes, you became. I became at the church pressure. Okay. And that church pressure, bottom line, it, it amounted to God's call. Wow. That's how my talk. My, I'm not these characters you see in and fake ministers who call themselves. No. I was called through the church. Uh, and the witnesses who evaluated me and found me. Uh, found my Presbyterianism not wanting. Now, uh, those who found that my salvation was not wanting, they, they, they would have refused to. They you. are the ones who called me. And that's how God called me. If I called myself like these people who... Now, let me ask you now that you yeah. mentioned that, Reverend, mm. that you asked was calling from God and calling from the people who have... Who the public you, participation. The public, the public participation. Yeah. I like the way you like the public, the inclusion. People yeah. said it is joy. Yeah. You yeah. accept it. I, I was then, unable to receive. What you do say today, because religion today, now you hear these complaints of having people, you go to a church, it belongs to the, like the way people say, it's a wife and the husband. Find a bigger picture, we start, a, it's like a business. What call them, they call it themselves, not God. If had they, called, had they been called by God, uh, God would have appointed him them through a process acceptable. And then he would have objected, like Jeremiah he said, no, I'm too young. But to now, you but, know, even, even but, Moses was objecting. But now the Bible and says... And he was told by God, no, I don't, I don't use... Herod, to help you. you know, Re Reverend, yeah. the, the Bible says you don't judge. How would you even know when you say not, you are not judging. a charlatan like no, them? No, you told me, you told me, to, to, you, ask, you are talking about me, that's why I'm yes. using myself as a Christian. Okay. Now, I'm not saying what you are talking to. Yes. I'm saying, yeah. for me, I consider anybody yeah. who called themselves. Yes. Who called themselves. themselves yes. Caratans. Yes. I call them uh, uh, Coleman. Yes. And we have too many men in the church today. So as a... As like this one who killed more than... Okay, now I was coming to that. Yeah. that. This one this one in Malindi who killed people. Oh. I don't know what... Was he, he called... Was he, had he been called through the parents of those children he killed? Or through the community? Or through he people... He started recognize? preaching and people did, followed did him. Did, did the people recognize him? Yes, they did. That is where you had so many followers. No, I don't think about that followers. I mean in the community. Did the community participate in his call? When, when, if, they, if you, someone starts a service... Let me ask you. Let's uh -huh. go to the Bible. Uh -huh. When Moses was called, didn't he refuse? He was refusing. When he was saying, I have no talent. God, I, go, I can't make it. He was told, no, I don't. How do your brother will know? He was saying, I'm not articulate, wasn't he? Yes. He was objecting because he didn't want to call himself. Who else? Jeremiah. He said, God called me like Reverend Joa when I was in my mother's womb. Like the way you were called 25 years ago. Yeah, yeah. I was, he said, like Joa, I was called by God to become a prophet in my mother's womb. And I said, who am I, Lord? He asked God, who am I? God said, I'll call you from your mother's womb. And before, I'm saying, who made Adam? Did he make himself? No. Who makes us? God. God. Why do we, should we make ourselves what we are not? So let me ask you now. 
because of your experiences and you are full of wisdom, experience and even education. What would you say about these churches that have really mushroomed? Even yesterday I had the president commenting about it. What would you want them to work out? What would you advise now the Kenyans? What account. would you advise Kenyans? They are personal private companies. What would you advise Kenyans? I'm how would they detect? I, 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 I'm saying that. I, how would they detect the right pastor now? Maybe you, the, the briefers and yeah. the followers may not know what they are following. That's what I'm asking. But they may end up dying. They may end so up, what would they look? What the, would they be the, looking at? Some of them may, may, may end up being insulted, like a clergyman was saying, uh, who was shit calling people names. Yeah. That you ate from my hand all the time. So, what would you tell the Kenyans that, out of your experience and are a serious reverend of them days, what would you say? What are some of the things if you want to follow the right person? What would they be looking? I, I, I would tell them that these people, I said, they are vulnerable. Oh, so uh, they uh -huh. are very vulnerable because of lack of hope. Lack. That's why they take drugs. Not. You see. They are taking spiritual shanga the way they take the other shanga. So There's no difference between those churches. And the, what you call? And they taking what? Ethanol. Okay, I'm saying. Reverend, advise those Kenyans who are vulnerable. I don't, I don't, what are the things that they I, should I, look I, for I don't, for I don't them see, to know that, oh my God, I, here I, I'm vulnerable. I don't take difference between going to some of these churches and going to a shanga. Then they are going to be spiritually drunk. And kill themselves like they are the Shanga people are committing suicide but slow a bit slowly. You see, these people by hungering and fasting, they are killing themselves the way you would go to a Shanga den and drink and kill yourself. Only that Shanga takes longer to kill. So I'm saying, or ethanol takes a bit, a bit longer. So I'm talking about being psychologically, emotionally, socially vulnerable. When you have no job, you become nobody. And therefore, to become a, a somebody, you drink. Or to become somebody, you have to leave this world and go to heaven, where you can be, God can give you, uh, you can have, uh, what do you call, afterlife soul salvation. I can't fight, I can't, I don't like going to have. Okay, my last question, uh, mm. Reverend. Yeah. This is about our constitution. Mm. And I've seen that even the constitution, which was given by Mzungu, you have the copy here. And uh, now, until there's given this... Given by Mzungu, and I was part of the main structure. You were part of it. Uh, no, 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 no. The yourself. one Kenyatta was given, which was Mzungu, not signed. Was yes, I'm saying you are you the participatory one. Yes. Now you, the one that you are part of, mm -hmm. the one for Kenya, We've have gone through the constitution. I've seen many rights. Where did you, as you now, because now even you, you are old, where did the where did the part of the elderly come in strongly in our constitution? Do you think our country is doing the right thing? Yes, there's no better country than Kenya even now. It is the best. It's not. A, I'm not talking about the country. It is beautiful. Yes, I'm asking yes. as far as the elderly care is concerned. The elderly care, mm -hmm. it, the, the elders today, because they <coughs> live in homesteads and the village, where uh, part the homestead is the same, the old, young, and children. Yes. Children, babies, children benefit by being taken care of by their grandparents. Yes. Even myself, I don't take care of my grandparents, except when they come once in a year. Yes. So I'm saying, because of that, of lack of the in, in the... The integrity of the marriage of no, no, not of the family of the family institution. We 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 have very having very few family institutions. Even when we see people are not yet uh, modernized, like in Tukan, in in Pokot and other places, you can see the sons. What sons are that doing? They are killing their children, their parents, aren't they? Yes. They, they don't care about life. Yes. Because the the, the attraction to money. Sitting boats, goats like uh, in Kakuma and bringing them to the Gorete market and being helped by politicians and being provided guns. That is more like uh, a Maasai warrior in the past. It's only the heroism is no longer the old one, the heroism is the current one. When you talk about that kind of heroism, imagine a person saying, I will pray for you. 
trading with the players, marketing players, and you paying money and taking, going for shopping <laughs> to Dubai. Marketing uh, players. Uh, yeah. You, the person goes to buy for shopping and take his family for shopping, not to, not to, uh, to, Nai to Nakumat here in Nairobi. Oh, so, so what do you think? It, it takes his family to do shopping but with your money and your poor to Dubai. Yeah. And he goes for holiday to Paris. Yes. And with whom money? Prayer, so, so prayer yeah. market. Yeah. So I'm saying, uh, I, I get, 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 uh, people have become psychologically, morally, emotionally vulnerable. Very vulnerable by differences in that you want to, to uh, one time I said in the TV, in the TV, I think it's KTN. Some before elections, before before the new constitution, I said uh, some people are very vulnerable to uh, promises, false promises. Uh, uh, I know some people. One man, a politician, promise shoes to all women after he is getting elected. Uh, and, and all that kind of thing. I said, people are becoming vulnerable, not only, and I had a religious people are with me, not only to religion being promised shoes, but being show, promised heaven as if they promise us no, <laughs> no own it. To a point of being promised heaven. And they are heaven. promised heaven, not in this life, because in this life it's vulnerable. They are promised after life, so salvation. After life, so salvation. So do you... But people who don't know tangible, it cannot prove there is about it's a faith so now what you do do you think there's anything that the government can do to streamline this okay what i did is that when i preached that people watched the tv and i said people go to to walk to, to their these churches some go by pickups on top and others by bus and these people are diving pajero and and, and musos and, it, and, they, and they, they are driving Mercedes. I've never driven those kind of cars. But now, you know what? People came here in this Kariyo garden to tell them that they are not going back anymore to these churches. To come to my church. I told them, no, I have no church. I'm retired. <laughs> so what would you, you know, tell them? You know, do, you think, do you think now, if people yeah. like you are retired yeah. and you cannot go out there now the way you used to to fight for our second liberation, mm. because I think this is something that needs really liberation. Okay. Okay. What really, do you think should be done? I, this, saying, this church issue has become... Uh, we, we, it's, a yeah. very, it's a big, it's a social, it's not a religious matter. Yeah. You think it's a religion because people are, are, are going to the forest to die. Yeah. No, it's not religious. That's a symptom. Oh. It's a sign of a decaying society. It is a sign of a corrupt society where people no longer have hope in life. They have lost hope. Oh, Lord. You understand? Yeah. So, what should we do? Mm. What would you suggest out of your experiences and out of knowing your How old are you? Yeah, I'm old enough to hear what How old are you? 54. Eh? 54. You have the answers. <laughs> <laughs> you have not, not that you have them now here. Mm -hmm. You have time to look for the answers. Yeah. That now I'm told you is a symptom of a problem. Mm -hmm. it's, people are vulnerable. Mm -hmm. And they are, they are hopeless. Yes. Because all what they are promised by the, the politicians never worked. They were promised mansions, they don't have them. They are promised f food at a certain price. There is no such food at a, because the government has no grow food. Okay, you are saying you want to, to lower the price of, of Uga. Yeah. Who, where do you, it's, even if it is lowered, where is it? The question is, supposing, the, the, supposing it was free, hmm. where is it? I'm asking you. Supposing today, uh, uh, people don't, are not promised simply free unga. Uh, uh, no, cheaper unga. We are to promise free unga. The first place is to see it. Where is it? I'm asking you, where is it? Nowhere. Nowhere. Mm -hmm. So, you are, you are, you are, it is Chubakad Mountain. That's what George Orwell said that people are promised 
And that's why politics in Kenya is the opium of the Mine. masses. Oh, you understand? Yeah. So I'm saying, and that opium does not cure the problem. It just suppresses the pain. It, it just suppresses the pain. But the best way to, to, to suppress the pain is to go to those churches and die, or to go to a Shanga den and die. So what should we do? do? Final question, what should we do? What should we do as people of Kenya? What should we do as the government of Kenya? Go and give birth to as many children as possible so that some can die. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I'm just kidding you. But anyway, that is Lever and Joy, and uh, we are about to finish now. And uh, we say thank you very much. We've learned so much, and we are here to come back. And you are such a strong man, but you are very strong because of your mother. That's what makes me happy. So women can be strong, and their kids can follow. I'm happy that you are made of a woman. Thank you so much, Reverend Joy, and God bless you so much.